Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. All right, we're gonna start off with this picture of Diana and you guys are gonna realize why at the end of the video, okay? But of course, as is usual, we have a lot to cover because it's just a never ending diatribe of, <laughs> of stuff. So let's just jump in with both feet and get there, shall we? Let's go. All right, to start with, I'm very happy to see this. Mike and Zara Tyndall are on a skiing holiday in Austria. Don't ask me to give you the name of the town because I can't pronounce it, but it looks like they're having a great time. Good for them. All right, next up, we've got Catherine and Sophie. Now, in case you guys haven't noticed through the years by watching them, they both get along really well. They both come from very modest backgrounds, both moved and married into the royal family, and they obviously support each other when it comes to causes. Now, they, there is a 17-year age gap. Obviously, Sophie is older than Catherine. Now, according to this article, the two of them have similar interests. They have similar passions. They both love sports. They both love fashion. They have a lot of common causes. Both of them champion work with children and young people's charities. And they have been on hand to help each other out at major family events. They're both known for their wonderful, classically tailored and timeless outfits. It came out in 2019 that Sophie had had a hand in some of the outfits that Catherine had chosen. A designer said that Sophie had bought select items for Kate in the past. So, you know, she helped her with her, I don't know, her outfit choices when she first got there. During lockdown in 2020, they were very close to each other. They made a lot of video calls to people. They did joint engagements together. They've stood side by side at numerous events, balcony appearances, trooping the color, Remembrance Sunday, polo matches, weddings, but it's not just at public events. So, you know, Sophie had teenage children when Catherine had her first child. And Sophie kept her children out of the public eye until they decided what they wanted to do. And so, of course, she probably gave Catherine some of her tips, I'm sure, you know. And, of course, now we also know that she offered to help uh, Megan. And Megan said, I don't want Sophie. I think she should have taken Sophie. I think she would have learned a lot. All right, moving on. This next article really caught my attention because what it's asking is, should Prince Anne's husband be recognized as a working royal? Okay, they've been married since 1992. He's made regular royal appearances, but he's simply not formally recognized as a working royal. So the question is, do you think he should be? One of the royal commentators said that he should, King Charles should recognize him because they need more working royals to fill the gaps left by Harry and Meghan and the Duke of York and to assist the royals who are now getting up there in age, like the Duke of Gloucester, the Duke of Kent. And this change wouldn't impact the calendar. He still goes everywhere with Anne. I agree. All right, moving on. Next up, it is Holocaust Memorial Day. And King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla had an audience with Holocaust survivor Dr. Martin Stern and Darfur genocide survivor Amona Adam. I hope I'm saying that right. And that was at Buckingham Palace. So Charles and Camilla sat down and spoke with the two survivors. And then they lit a candle to mark Holocaust Memorial Day. This is the 78th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, Birkenau Nazi concentration camp. And after he lit the candle, the king said, and I'm quoting, I hope this will be one way of trying to remember all those poor people who had to suffer such horrors for so many years and still do. You know, Dr. Stern, one of the survivors said, I'm sure that people would like us to forget what happened and move on. But you know, the one way you keep things from happening again is by remembering them. I would like to thank Norman Brennan on Twitter for this photo. It's very poignant. 
And I'd like to thank Claire Mully also for this photo. For those of you who don't know, 20,000 Hungarian Jews were shot on the banks of the Danube River after they removed their shoes. And the shoes were deemed, because the shoes were supposed to be valuable. And so now there's a monument there composed of 60 pairs of shoes made of iron. Very touching. You know, one of the photos that really gets me is this one. If you held a moment of silence for every victim of the Holocaust, look how long you'd be silent for. I mean, if that doesn't bring it home. And of course we know it wasn't just Jewish people who were killed. We know it was gypsies, anybody who was gay, anybody who was disabled, so many people. It's just unbelievable. This picture is also very poignant. This is a memorial uh, for the kinder transport. These are where the children, uh, you know, were taken. Terrible. It's nice to see other countries also uh, taking um, advantage of, memor of the memorial. Crown Princess Victoria from Sweden uh, was also seen at a memorial service. All right, moving on now. We know that Omid Scobie wrote Finding Freedom. We know that he is Harry and Meghan's mouthpiece. I think this whole thing is orchestrated myself, but whatever. So supposedly, right after Harry told him he was writing utter nonsense, Omid Scobie went online and said that uh, they're oversaturated and people are sick of hearing about them. I can wholeheartedly agree with that. He says the public is getting tired of listening to the drama and they're getting Sussex fatigue. He said, and I'm quoting, there are people that think enough is enough and we're tired of hearing about you. Stop whining. And then at the same time, he says, but they're really putting out valid conversations that just make people freak out. No, they're not freaking me out, Omid. I literally am sick of hearing two of the most pampered people on the place of the, of, on the face of the planet whining about their lot in life as they're flying around in private jets and they're living in this 16 bedroom mansion or however many bathrooms it has. Like they need to grow up and move on, especially since every story they give us is a different version. All right, moving on. Prince William is really concerned that Harry's constant vicious assaults uh, on the palace is killing King Charles. It's putting a very big toll on him and on his health. And as a result, William's having to keep a close eye on him. Now we know that King Charles has had COVID twice. He has chronically swollen hands and feet. And um, so, you know, people are worried that he has um, edema, which can be tied to kidney problems. And William basically just can't fathom how heartless and selfish Harry is to continue to behave this way when he knows his father is not in the best of health. Then again, you have to sit back and go, well, wait a minute. He did the book and he did the Netflix series while the queen was alive. And knowing that had she not died when she had, she would have seen it. And he didn't seem to care then either. It's being reported that Charles, who is a little bit overweight, also suffers from high blood pressure and deals with a lot of stress due to Harry and Meghan. Hmm. And what essentially is being said online that I can see is that if something were to happen to Charles and somehow Harry's behavior and the stress was linked to Charles passing, William will never forgive him because he knows the amount of stress the queen was put under before she passed away. So if that happens, I don't think William will be so kind and forgiving as the queen was or as Charles we think might be. He should look out. Next up, remember when Harry gave that interview and he said that, oh, my hometown just accepted us and they just love us? Well, come to find out that may not be the truth. Uh, where he lives, the book is not selling and it was said he might as well live in Iowa for all the attention that he gets there. People there are over him. They don't want anything to do with him or Megan. I'm telling you, they really put their foot in it. All right, moving on. I found this. I believe this is Instagram. Notice what Harry says. I had some Coke and rubbed my mommy's cream on my Todger. And Meg worked the Ouija board like a pro. And soon I heard my mom's voice whispering, H, I'm your wife. Write a book for me. And I was healed. <laughs> They're saying that this is what's going to happen at that Better Up, you know, convention they're having where you're, it's $1,000 a ticket. 
Yeah, I could totally see that. All right, let's move on to the last thing. All right, here's the last thing. Now, we know that Megan likes to copy Diana's mannerisms. It's whole part of her I'm your wife thing. You know, it's, it's just cringe. So anyway, I noticed during the Netflix docuseries that she was sitting there talking. Now, I've tried to do that myself. If you have your arm on a table and you're cupping your chin like that to hold your chin up, that's normal. But it's not normal to put your fingers, it's unnatural to put your fingers in a V on your face and talk and I kept wondering why is she doing that that's such an unusual movement what's going on and then I saw this yeah yeah I, I, yeah we're I have no words y you guys know where I'm going with that all right you guys now I'm gonna tell you again to hit that subscribe button. If you've already hit the button, double check it because I've been told by somebody who sent me an email that she has been unsubscribed four times now. I have no control over that, guys. You guys just have to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to leave those comments. Don't forget to go up into the description box and there you'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, and my Patreon. Don't forget, we're still fundraising until the end of January. This is going to be good. As always, you guys, have a great day.